Yeah, winning this award is really very meaningful to me because it represents the fact that I've actually touched somebody. The fact that um, an associate would nominate me for this award makes me feel good that you know being a champion of well-being in the workplace really had an impact on my associates and for the benefit of my associates. I'm most proud of the fact that our group segment implemented digital detox because it has such a phenomenal impact across all of our associate population. And that's where we agreed not to send emails um, or texts from Friday evenings at 6 p.m. through Monday mornings at 6 a.m. And the reason I'm really proud of it is because it's so critical for employees to be able to take time over the weekend to re-energize so that they can really bring their A-game to work. It's important for them to be able to connect with their families, connect with their lo loved ones, and just really be able to step away from it all. And Digital Detox has helped them uh, achieve that rejuvenation. The first thing to consider when you're implementing a program like Digital Detox is how will the associates really feel about it. Um, oftentimes people get a little nervous if your culture is to be on 24 by 7. They may think, gosh, am I going to be seen as a slacker in the organization? Uh, the other thing is there are some areas within your organization that may operate 24 7 and may need to have that connectivity. So you really want to make sure that you create a program that really encompasses everybody. Um, if you do have a, an organization that has to be on 24-7, then maybe you've reached agreement, for example, that emails or texts are really only going to be emergencies and routine correspondence won't happen over the weekend. That gives your associates a little bit of downtime. So I think really thinking about how you can adjust the program. And then the other thing I would uh, say is to be committed. If you agree to this, it's really, really important that you model the behavior and very gently, um, you know, nudge people who may not be playing along. And, you know, it's a behavior, like any behavior. It takes time to really learn and to catch on, but if you take the right approach and give those nudges appropriately, you will see that uh, the program will, in fact, um, catch on and will permeate your organization, and it will definitely be the better for it. A few tips that I would share with employers the first one would be just try it. You know, there are different ideas out there. Maybe you're not sure it's going to get a return on investment or you're not sure how well it's going to play. But just test it. Do a simple test and learn. Maybe you'll test in a little pocket of your organization. You don't have to roll everything out nationwide out of, out of the gate. But I think having little tests and learns is really, really important. And the second tip that I would um, suggest is to really think broadly and think about total well-being. A lot of times we really focus on physical fitness and physical activities, you know, step programs and things like that, which are awesome. But there's so much more to well-being and there are so many issues out there that really need to be addressed. And I would really, really encourage employers to really think about total well-being, think about the physical health, the emotional health, think about financial well-being, and think about purpose and belonging. And, you know, really offer a broad program. I think the broader that you can get, the more that you can get your employees engaged because someone may not be into the physical step part of it, but, you know, maybe they're really interested in bettering their financial well-being or they're really interested in, in volunteering. And I think when you broaden your scope, you just really help create a stronger fabric of well-being in your organization.